What's going on today, Internet Selfish here with Retrospect. It's not often anymore that I am surprised by a handheld and the way that it performs and feels and all the good stuff that you can get out of a handheld with some of the quirky bad stuff as well. But right here we do have the CB408 and this handheld caught me completely off guard. There's a lot going for it if it can all be pulled together. But let's take a look. <laughs> All right, before we get too far into this, I just want to say you're going to have to bear with me a little bit because I am a little bit under the weather right now. It's uh, It's been, it's been uh, just not feeling very good, but I did want to get this out here because this is an awesome device, and with the sales that are going on at AliExpress right now, I want to make sure you didn't miss your opportunity to get this while the getting is good. Now, full disclosure, I have been playing with this for a couple of weeks now, uh, on and off. This is everything that comes in the box. And part of the reason why I had, I had actually initially started doing that, and I was intending on making my review right away, but uh, it wouldn't turn on when I got it. So I'll just kind of go through this real quick. It does come with a Type-C charger, so it's an A to C, like pretty much all these handhelds do. And then the other thing it comes with is its origami accordion. And this just has uh, some information on it, pretty much like all of them do. Doesn't really tell you a whole lot. Just kind of tells you what front end and everything is on here. It does tell you though, when you do it originally, it's going to have a setup screen to tell you to choose your language and things like that. Mine did not have that, but if you just go to settings, you can change it to English. If it's not, mine wasn't English, so it wasn't a problem. But that would be the only thing that's really listed in here as on that setup screen. Only thing you're missing out on, really. I did want to put out this box though, real quick, and it's because it, for one, it's got a weird texture on it. Just can't put my hand on it. It is, it feels like something. I just can't think of what it is. But this box looks very familiar. CB stands for something blueprint i can't remember what the beginning part of it is it's not console but it does stand for something blueprint and so it is an actual legitimate company which is cool uh this i think i believe is the first handheld they've ever made it's the only one that i've ever been able to find of theirs so that's pretty cool their information is different everywhere you look uh, for instance uh, when we go through the specs here it does say it has a 4.95 inch screen but then here on the box here, it says it has a 4.7. By the looks of it, and I can't tell you for sure, but I'm pretty sure it's actually a 4.7 inch screen the more I look at it here. I believe that the box is probably more correct. But we did review a handheld recently that did say a purpose built to spark your imagination on the box in the same spot. So it's really odd that a couple of these companies are using the same quote. Just something I thought I'd point out there while I'm looking at this. I'm sure I'm not going to be the only one that points this out as others begin to review this. Just something interesting there. And this texture, man, I just can't get over it. I don't know what the texture is, but it's it's neat. It's, uh, it's soft almost. Most, but uh, we'll take a look at the handheld now. We're gonna start off by going over the IO here real quick like we always do. We'll turn her over here. On the top we do have our L1, L2, R1, R2 shoulders. They are definitely micro switches. Very little travel but they actually work very well. We'll start over here on the left hand side like we normally do. We do have a micro SD hole. We do have a power button. We do have a reset switch. We do have a C hole, an HDMI hole, an A hole, this here can be used for hooking up a controller to the handheld. So if you want to play two player, you have the ability to hook a controller directly in versus having to use Bluetooth, though it does support that. And then we do have a three five hole right here as well. On the back, we do have a really nice finish. So this whole device is actually made uh, of this aluminum. Um, it's kind of like an ABS aluminum that they use on some things. It feels really good. It, it's definitely, um, I feel like it should scratch, but so far it hasn't. Uh, but then it also has, if these look familiar uh, to some other handholds that we've reviewed in the past, typically these are actually made not as grips, but to prevent the handheld from falling off of the table. They're more for like sliding. And as you can see, it definitely works for that. But these are thicker. And the advantage of that is this actually makes the handheld more comfortable. It almost adds like that ergonomic bump to the back. Not quite as good as the bump, but it is a good second that if you might. All right. On the left-hand side over here, we have nothing. On the right-hand side, we have nothing as well. On the bottom here, we have our speaker holes. As far as I know, there's one speaker in here, but we do have two speaker holes. I did have this open and I can't remember what the speaker situation was now off the top of my head, but I believe there's actually only one speaker in here. On the front here, we do have our switch style joysticks. These do have L3 and R3, they do click. We do have our face buttons. And these face buttons, we'll see if we can get it here on the old poker cam. They do travel pretty well. Uh, they do not fall below the screen here and they are a membrane style face button. We do have our D-pad over here, also membrane style. It's a little stiff, stiffer than I like, but it's kind of right there. Uh, you are able to pull off your Chinookans and things like that with this fairly well. Um, it, once it loosens up a little bit, I think it'll be a little bit better. It's, it's not the worst D-pad I've ever used, that's for sure, but it is a little stiffer than I typically prefer it to be. But again, it's a membrane, so it's not too bad. Then there are only other tactile buttons on here. The volume button sounds a little hollow. And then we also have our select start home and back buttons on here. And these are also micro switches. Not nearly as hollow sounding as the volume buttons but they are micro switches as well and one other thing that's really unique to this and you can't see it but if we go back to the back here which side is it on i think it's on this side yep 
This is cut out behind here, on, just on this side over here, and that is because the antenna for the Wi-Fi actually runs outside of the handheld, and it runs underneath this rubber padding here. And the reason being is if you have a metal handheld, we learned uh, the last couple of years as a company has been making these that you get Wi-Fi interference because the signal can't travel through the metal very well. These guys have actually been innovative enough to figure out how to, through this rubber, run the Wi-Fi to the external device where you can't see it or anything like that and keep it all nice and covered up and make it work really well. The Wi-Fi in here does get a good signal. Pretty impressive that a new company like this would think of something like that. And before we really get into the device here, we will set her down just because there are a couple things that are a little bit unique to this. So this is actually running an RK3566 CPU. This here is listed as running Android and Linux. Right now, the way it stands, it only runs Android, but it would have the ability to run Linux because it is running an RK3566 CPU with an ARM Mali 52 GPU. It does have two gigs of LPDDR4 RAM. It does have a built-in an 8 watt cavity speaker and this is what I was thinking I think there's only one speaker in here 4000 milliamp battery 5 volts 2 amps pretty typical for things within this market here Maximum power on the battery consumption is five watts and the life is five hours. Charging time takes about two and that's all about, that's pretty accurate. I think they got that down pretty well. It obviously uses type C charging, which I had showed you. It does have that OTG data port, which also can be used for a controller. That's gonna be your A right up here on the top and that headphone jack that we discussed earlier, which it's nice to see that those are still in these for people that are really worried about audio latency on a handheld, I guess. It's never been a concern of mine. I don't know if it's a concern of yours. Let me know down on the thing about why you'd want to have a wired option. Just kind of curious. I've never used them. Other than testing. I use them in testing, but I can't think of any other time I've ever used them. So yeah, let me comment down the thing about, let me know when would be a good time to use a wired headset on a handheld. I feel like there's enough latency when you're doing emulation anyways, it probably doesn't matter, but I could be wrong. Maybe you'll change my mind. And now with all that out of the way, like I said at the beginning, when I got this, it didn't actually work. And I'm not exactly sure which thing caused it, but I had processed a return on it already. And then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna take a look and just make sure the battery is plugged in. So I opened the device up and found that the IPS display was not plugged in and the battery was super loose, like moved not where the battery was supposed to be. So I don't know if the battery was a little loose. I did check the connections on that stuff as well. But I plugged the screen back in, ran the ribbon where I thought it was supposed to go, which is underneath the battery, which is a terrible design. That's probably the worst design thing on here is having that ribbon run underneath the battery. It kind of seems like it's long enough where it should have run over the battery, but for some reason they decided to run it underneath. I think that's causing their issue. Any amount of battery movement and shipping will cause that ribbon cable to become unplugged. I think that's what happened. Put it all back together and it works great touchscreen works things like that now i have talked to some other reviewers i know you're gonna see a few reviews on these coming up because a lot of us were just chatting about this that the touchscreens even after doing that don't work but their ips displays were also unplugged in my instance i couldn't even turn the device on and it isn't that uncommon if the display is unplugged that the device won't power up but these other instances some of them where the display was unplugged the device does power up and the touchscreen just doesn't work and it still doesn't work for some of them it were about a 50 50 mix on whether or not the touchscreen's going to work or not when you get this i think there's an easy fix here for the manufacturer so don't get scared off by that i think that if they're aware of the situation they could easily remedy this prior to it leaving their warehouse for a new manufacturer they did a pretty good job on a lot of other things here so screen aside everything else is doing pretty well here um, and it's not a bad screen it's just a matter of making sure they can figure out how to keep that thing plugged in so this does come with a unique kind of uh setup there's something actually that's an android game setting anything once you hit like android i think it's 12 or 13 android game starts getting built in this i believe is running android 11 but it still has the games tab feature so when you get the handheld and this is where some of the people thought that the, these weren't touchscreen, but you do have this interesting overlay here, which kind of looks like uh, a Linux overlay you might see in some of the systems that we do, but just like a little bit more poppy. I mean, it works fine. It's kind of like a kind of a jank emulation station front end or like an arcade front end kind of thing. So it's not terrible. Not a lot on here. There is a 120 gig card in here. I thought the operating system was on there, honestly, because how little games there are, but nope, it's actually operation system runs separately. So as you can see, we do have a wide plethora of games that are available on here. Now, if you want to, and you don't want to run this because it will kind of feel like you're stuck like if you hit home and everything you're kind of stuck in the screen but if you go in here through the top it's just kind of like if you wrote into retroid or even the amber where they have their own front end overlay that's what we're looking at right now if you hit this games button right here oh i hit it twice okay if you hit the games button you go actually go into native android google play isn't on here i tried side loading it um, you can register it on here. It looks like it would go through. I wouldn't recommend running Play on here, to be honest. I wouldn't run any of the Google apps because this is already kind of straining on a 3566 to run Android to begin with. You don't want to rob any additional memory trying to run any of the Google Play stuff in the background because you'd probably lose half of what you have for power. The other thing I noticed too is it does have this error here for a zero console enabled. I don't know what that means. I tried to fight, figure it out, couldn't, but it does look like it does take a fair amount of the memory usage on here. If that's something I wanted to disable and we could figure out how to disable that, 
I think that this would actually perform much better from my little bit of research I did online. So that's something I definitely will take a look at here going forward. Um, like I said, I've had this for a couple of weeks now. And I've been playing with it on and off between different projects. So I, I'm kind of getting a feel for it, but I'm, I'm not quite there yet. To be honest with you, the look and feel of it reminds me of a uh, Retroid Pocket 3 Plus, the metal edition. And unfortunately, I don't have one here to show you right now. That runs a 4.7 inch screen, almost the exact same size. Minus this joystick would be down here. That one is D-pad centric. So the joystick is actually flipped on this side. But other than that, it pretty much, the, the feel, the design, it really feels like a Retro Pocket 3 Plus in the metal. So, but anyways, back to the Android setup. So you do have your typical Android and you can get into everything Android through your apps and stuff through the bottom. I did put Game Pass on here. I did try, try that out actually today for the first time. Tried Moonlight. Moonlight's um, questionable at best. It, it does work. Game Pass does work. It doesn't connect as fast as you almost wanted to for streaming. I think it's only connecting at 2.4 gigahertz. I could be wrong. I never saw it hit the 5 gigahertz side of my router, but I haven't had a chance to narrow it down yet. So I might be able to just run it off 5 gig and then just figure it out. But I have a feeling this is stuck. I'm guessing it's not dual band, but we'll, f we'll figure that out uh, if this is something we want to pursue going forward. There's a lot of opportunity here for a developer if they wanted to develop for this. I personally <laughs> struggle a little bit with some of, some of that, uh, making those decisions, but uh, this is like a sub $80 handheld. So it's a very quality handheld for, for what you're paying for it. You can run your N64 and Dreamcast, things like that, a lot better on, on the Android emulators than you typically can on the Linux side. So I think we do have a bonus there and we are able to play a little bit deeper into some of those games and they work really well well on here and we do have a lot of those same abilities to tweak everything because you can still run a retro arc back end but we have more standalone emulator options by doing it this way so what i think i'm going to do is i'm going to jump in and i'm just going to do a little bit of gameplay for you real quick and then just kind of give you a rundown of some of my pros and cons here and then we're going to look at revisiting this again once i get a chance to play with it a little bit more just more exclusively instead of kind of in between projects that i'm working on right now but i wanted you to get a chance to look at this because it's been on sale on aliexpress you should be able to pick it up between 60 and 80 and i'll throw a link down on my thing with bob to where i got it from you know what? Yeah, i can get shipped like a spatula or a flashlight or anything like that. So let's take a look. So as you can see by the performance, this is pretty much a typical 3566 as far as performance goes. It is running Android, which does rob it a little bit in some categories and helps it in others. Your Dreamcast, your N64, things like that emulation on the Android side tends to be a little bit better. I know there's going to be an argument here down in my comment section, but depending on what games you play and who you are and how you tweak things, there is an opportunity to make it better in Android. Let's go with that. Instead of saying it is or tends to be, we'll say there tends to be an opportunity depending on what and how you play your games. Just based off the emulators that are available for it and things like that. You can also sometimes get a little bit better PSP emulation. It's kind of a crapshoot though. Uh, those can go either way. As far as PlayStation goes, I mean, it works so good on both the Android and the Linux side. Not a whole lot to talk about there. But because this is a 3566 and it is a nice big screen and a horizontal, the only other real handheld we can compare it to that like, has come out recently recently is the E6 Plus. Now, I'm not going to lie, the E6 Plus, because it is like a mini Steam Deck, it is more comfortable. Also, a little bit more flashy now that I look at it, but it's not metal. If this was metal, oh, that would have been great. Now, this is a dual boot 3566, and it does run Android. It has a really janky version of Android on it. It comes even more stripped down than the version of Android that's here on the CB408, but just like the 
TB408, you can customize it once you kind of get into it. And you can register it as well for Google Play services. Again, either of these devices, I probably wouldn't run Google Play services on them because you don't want to lose anything else in the back end. But that's up to you. That's a choice that you can make. You just, you're going to get better emulation, higher refresh rates and things like that if you don't run the Google services on the back end. Now, if you've seen the recent update by Gamma, he is actually going to do a Gamma OS here for the E6 Plus. I would encourage him instead maybe to look at the CB408. Now, we do have a quality control issue here, as discussed earlier with how you receive this device and whether or not it was working properly out of the box. So for an average consumer, this might not be 100% the right device. Granted, this front end on here is very user-friendly and you could literally just get out of the box and play it the way that it's set up as long as it's working and everything's great. But if you are doing a new OS, you're probably not that first come consumer anyways, especially if you're doing something like Gamma. So I think that I would prefer to see him do it on the CB408. Now, as long as he can make it for the E6 Plus, there's probably gonna be some very slight tweaks to make it work on the CB408. Minus the fact that this has like one random hall stick on it. I don't know why it does one instead of two. It really bothers me too, because they don't match. It just the look of it just drives me nuts. But anyways, that's not here nor there. There shouldn't be a whole lot of difference in moving that operating system over to this. So maybe we can get a two for one. I'm not really sure. I like I do most Monday nights, watch the Retro Handheld podcast last night. And it looks like a couple of the reviewers on there got this device as well. Now, all of us who have this, it was an accident. And what I mean by that is is we all just independently saw that this random handheld was on there and we were intrigued by it and ordered it. And we all had different problems when we received it as far as getting it up and running, but they're all kind of set around the same thing. It's really around that display cable, really easy fix, four screws and push the cable back in. But for an average consumer, that's not gonna be right. But if they can fix that quality control issue, this is just a huge contender in best budget handheld of the year between its body, its design, things like that. So aside from the fact that it performs like a 3566 handheld that you would have anywhere else, whether it be the E6, plus or it'd be the rgb 30 it still is just that familiar feel as far as this type of handheld though more comfortable i would rather play this than my retro pocket 4 pro it is a more comfortable handheld to hold on to i know that's gonna again ruffle some feathers but this is a more comfortable handheld now not again not as powerful i'm not gonna be playing switch on here game streaming isn't the greatest on here it works but not the greatest definitely has a lot more going for it but it's also anywhere between three and four times the cost of this so if you're just getting into this hobby this might be the handheld to start with and as things mature and and we play with this a little bit more. I know I'm gonna put some more time in with it to do a follow-up video with some more things. I was gonna do a full setup guide on this, but I think I might do that in my follow-up or maybe a separate video. There is some opportunity here though, even the way it sits today without getting a different operating system in order to make this perform just a little bit better. Um, I'm also gonna to try to figure out how to fix whatever's robbing memory on the back end there. And I think that'll push this even closer to a contender for a budget handheld of the year type category. It's not quite there yet, but I would prefer to pay an extra 20 bucks and get this over an R36S. That's just my own opinion. For one, it is a more powerful chipset in this as well so you are already going to be paying more for that not a vertical but it is a really nice horizontal and this aspect ratio works out pretty well for a lot of things and the screen looks really good now that i took the sticker off of it, it looks even better i don't know why i left that sticker on there i really just i like peeling them off when i'm doing the reviews but man uh, it looks so much better without the sticker on there i was kind of thinking the screen was a little bit washed out i mean maybe some of my viewing angles weren't very good it's not the best viewing angles but it's definitely not washed out like i thought it was but i'd love to know your opinions if you can leave them down in the comment section if you've been on this channel or if you're new here just so you're aware i do pretty much read all the comments and try to respond to I'd say almost all of them but I think that's pretty much where we're going to wrap up this first look I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below also don't forget to like and subscribe share this video with your friends because sharing helps grow the channel we've had a couple of unlisted videos lately for some reason uh, YouTube knows that it's an issue but it's been an issue so I know a lot of you guys haven't been seeing all the content that's out I just did an S9 review for a new telescopic controller that is in a campaign right now on Kickstarter for Absolute I will throw a link to the campaign down in my thing Bob, but also a link to the video I did on it so if you missed that video you have an opportunity to go back and see it not sure what's going on there but even when i go into it it tells me it's not listed and then some people say they can find it just fine so i don't know what's going on and we will be uh reviewing an oldie but a goodie here coming up so i got a pretty exciting review coming up on a handle that i really really enjoy we've talked about a few times on the channel but never actually done a review on it so that'll be coming right around the corner the other thing we got coming up is a custom built emulation little machine that does some really cool stuff so if those are some things that interest you i would stick around on the channel again hit that subscribe button it's right here floating around next to these two videos that youtube has chosen for you that stuff should be out here shortly pretty cool stuff anyways uh that's all i got for today thanks for watching Bye bye